Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Lei Ling, and I am going to uh, present to you a very, very simple presentation on a solely theoretical topic, leadership styles. Well, basically, to be honest, I copy all of these content from a textbook that I studied at school, so there is nothing new or actually interesting about this. First, um, when we talk about leadership styles, well, we refer to the way in which managers take decisions and communicate with their staff. It's how your boss deals with you, how he likes you, how she hates you, and everything else like that. There are four types of leadership styles, like four basic types. First of all, autocratic, paternalistic, democratic, and finally, laissez-faire. I believe this comes from a French word. First, Autocratic, um, basically there's a lot of text right here, but you can understand that the manager is the one who decides everything. You don't have a voice in what go, what's going on in the business, what's going on in the office. Your boss will tell you what to do. The disadvantages of uh, this type of leadership include demotivation to the staff, and then, um, yeah, we can hardly benefit anything from the stuff like new ideas or new ways of thinking and stuff like that. Um, but there are also situa situations when autocratic leaders are really necessary. First of all, when you're in the army or when you're working for the police or in times of crisis, for example, fires, um, earthquakes and stuff like that. And paternalistic leadership is the second type of leadership I want to talk about. Um, there's a lot of text here again, but well, you can imagine a paternalistic leader as the one who acts like a parent. Paternalistic is a word coming from the word parent, right? He or she always tries her best to care for you because she, she or he thinks that they know best. <sighs> A downside of this type of leadership is that some workers will be dissatisfied with the fact that the boss actually asks them, well, how, how are we going to do this? But then he or she takes all the decisions themselves. There are also applications of this type of, this type of leadership. Um, it's when the managers think they know everything and then when the workers for the company are actually young or inexperienced. The third type is democratic. Um, participation from employees are already, always encouraged. Two-way communication and there is full staff involvement. A downside of this, not one, but three downsides of this will include it's really time consuming. It's, um, it's really not suitable when it comes to quick decision making situations and then the level of involvement may cause a bit of trouble in certain cases. About applications, let's be fast on this. There are workers, um, when they contribute everything, like how they think, how they feel, then you benefit from their new way of thinking or flexible workforce or whatever like that. Yes, and then we come to the final type of leadership. Managers delete, delegate virtually all authority and there are very broad criteria or limits in the workplace. But for less of fair leadership style, then workers may not appreciate the lack of structure and direction and the lack of feedback may also be, you know, a great, um, how, how to say, how, may put the employees off a bit. But these, this type of leadership style will work when managers are actually too busy or too lazy to take part in anything or when all the workers are actually experts in their field, they are, it will be better for them to work on their own without any control or management. So to uh, sum up, we have four types of leadership right here. From the strict control side, we have autocratic and then paternalistic. Further to this side, little control, we have democratic and then less of fear. And that's my presentation. Thank you for listening.